We all good with that? Um, so remember that waves are, arise from a disturbance in their transfer of energy. So like if I slam the table, uh, that's the disturbance, and then the energy is transferred through the air via sound wave to your ear, right? Um, if I have wind blow onto the ocean, it creates a disturbance uh, in the water, and then the energy gets transferred via an ocean wave, right? And you guys think about this. This is going back to the last unit. This is just another example of conservation of energy, right? So I, you know, it takes energy for me to slam that table, and then th that energy is converted into a sound wave, right? Um, except for the little bit of energy that goes into friction, okay? So this is just, this fits, this all flows and fits in together with all the rest of the stuff that we've been learning about, all right? Um, and then there's this fancy term propagated. Um, some people looked at me like I was weird when I said it before, but waves are propagated through a medium, and all that means is that they travel through a medium. The medium is what the wave is moving through. So right now I'm talking to you, the sound waves are moving through the air to get from my mouth to your ear, right? Um, an ocean wave, the medium would be the water. So the energy is traveling through the water, it's moving the water mo molecules up and down. For an earthquake wave or a seismic wave, it would literally be moving the earth, right? Um, so that would be the medium. The medium is just what the wave is traveling in, okay? Now, we talked yesterday about the fact that the velocity of the wave does not depend on the frequency or the wavelength, right? So the velocity of the wave is not determined by either the frequency or the wavelength. Uh, the velocity of the wave is only determined by the medium. So if I change what the wave is traveling in, it moves at a different speed, okay? And I was talking to someone in this class, actually, about this after class. So like, uh, normally, and we'll, we're gonna talk about this in a few days more at length, um, normally, when I'm speaking, my sound waves are traveling through the air at roughly 330 meters per second, okay? Um, now, when I say something, like if I have you all close your eyes, and then I very quietly move to a spot in the room, right, and, and make, a, you know, make some sort of noise after I move into that spot, with your eyes closed, can you still tell where, I, where I'm at? You can't, right? So even though sound is pretty fast, your brain can actually detect which ear the sound is going in first because your brain is the best supercomputer on the planet, right? Uh, so yeah, I can hear the sound, if the sound's coming from the left or the right or front. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, you can hear whether it's coming left or right or forward or behind. That's because your brain is determining which ear it hit first, how exactly it hit, um, and then you can figure that out. Now. If you close your eyes and you jump into the Leiden swimming pool, all right, um, and then you have a friend that goes somewhere else in the pool, like it's easier with two, let's say I have two metal pipes, uh, and you don't know where I'm at, and I bang the pipes together. When you're underwater, can you tell where the source of the sound was? The answer to that, you guys, is no. No. No, no. You can't tell your ears are on. Right, and the reason you can't tell is because Sound travels faster in water than air. So when you change the medium, you change the speed of the sound. Uh, so because the sound isn't traveling in air, it's traveling in water, it goes to your ear so fast that your brain actually can't figure out which ear it hit first, right? And so you can't tell where anything is. Um, you know, I always tell people this story. The, I would, when I was your age, I used to swim almost every day. I would swim across the lake and back that I lived on. That was a mile across. But whenever there were boats, I wouldn't do it. Because when you're swimming and you have your head in the water, uh, I can't tell where those boat motors are, right? It sounds always like they're right on top of you and it would freak me out because I didn't want to get run over and chopped up by an outboard, right? Um, so if there were people on their ski boats, which I don't know why they had them on a mile wide lake, <laughs> right? Because it's, it's like doing, um, it would be like doing NASCAR, but on a track that was, like half a mile, right? Like, our school track. Yeah, like our school track. That's exactly right. 
So um, anyway, quarter mile. it's neither here nor there. But uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, you cannot tell that sound. And then the other cool thing, and we're going to talk about this some more too, is that sounds actually travel further if they're going faster. Well, because I was going to say, like, when you go underwater, you crack your, your knuckles and it sounds a lot like louder. Yeah, it like, sounds... You hear someone else's crack their Right, too, yeah. right, right. And so, yeah, so like in my swimming example, the boat could be all the way across the lake, but when they crank that motor, it sounds like it's right on top of me. Like, it, it's, it's no good. But because sound travels so much faster in these other mediums and then it travels further, have you guys ever heard the expression, put your ear to the ground? Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason that exists is, be and you could literally try this today. If you put your ear on the ground, like the dirt outside, uh, you will hear sounds from miles away. Right. Because sound travels faster in denser mediums, in solids. And so, like, like uh, stand by me. Yeah, right, right. So, um, something, don't do this, because this is incredibly stupid. And I told you, like, your parents and grandparents did incredibly stupid things. It's amazing that we're all still alive. But one of the things that I used to do as a kid is I would put my ear on the train tracks that ran behind my house. Okay? And the reason I would do that is because I wanted to hear if the trains were coming. You could hear them from miles and miles and miles away. Why? Because sound travels very quickly through steel. Um, and then we would try to put pennies on the tracks and have the trains run over them. It, by the way, it doesn't work. Because the pennies fly off, you never find them. We did it like, I probably wasted like ten thousand dollars in pennies. Like, well, if we use tape. Yeah, because we would we would we would think that the train would crush the penny, and we would have like this cool crushed penny. Yeah, don't, don't try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gone. And then someone had the broken window. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so yeah, definitely don't do that. It's not worth it for any reason. But you could put your ear on the ground outside. Right. Um, so anyway, now I have this equation set up. So. It's, it's the frequency and the wavelength that are determining this, or I'm sorry, the frequency and the wavelength are not determining the speed. It's only what the wave is traveling and it's only the medium. So when you do these problems, you guys, uh, the frequency is never gonna change the velocity. Never, ever, ever. The wavelength will never change the velocity. The velocity will be fixed, okay? And like I said, we're gonna get a little bit more into um, how that plays out with sound. But we're gonna do that in, I can't remember if it's tomorrow or the next day, right? But for right now, like, that's where we were at, okay? So remember, there's also two types of waves. There's transverse waves, where the particles move perpendicular to the direction and travel of the energy. So the particles are moving up and down, up and down, where the energy is moving forward, right? And then we have longitudinal or compression waves or shock waves, whatever you want to call them, where the particles are vibrating back and forth and the energy is traveling in that same direction. So they're parallel to each other. So these are like sound waves. The other ones are like ocean waves and all that stuff. These are like sound waves. So now for a sound wave, this, like, this is a good visualization of what a sound wave looks like, you guys, because in order for the wave to travel, it's going to take if each one of those was an air molecule, it's gonna take that molecule and it's gonna make it vibrate, right? And it'll get pushed, they'll get pushed together, then they kind of get pulled apart, then they return to their original position, okay? So I want, I want everybody right now to think about this. Let's say that this was uh, you know, a pipe with air in it. And I'm on one end of this pipe, and you're on the other end of this pipe, and we both, we both talk into the pipe. We both say something, all right, at the same time, all right? So I'm sending a sound wave in, you're sending a sound wave in. Now, what happens when those two sound waves are in the same space, when they're occupying the same space? Oh, wait, oh, and sound waves? Well, anyway, and it could be any waves. So think about the slinky wave. Yeah, like, Matt. If they like occupy the same space, if uh, they like if they're like opposite, they'll like subtract each other. But if they're the same, they'll add up. So yeah, these are all like you guys are both really smart, and you figured this out. I can't have more than one wave, right? Uh, if in this air column, I can't have like two different waves. There's only like one set of air molecules to move, right? right. So if they're in the same space, 
then they do what we call interfere with each other. So we get wave interference. And I don't know if everybody at home heard what Matt said, but if the waves are on the same side of the rest line, they add up to get bigger. And if they're on opposite sides of the rest line, they subtract out to get smaller. And so we have words for those. They're called constructive interference. That's when the waves are gonna get bigger. bigger. And we have destructive interference, and that's when the waves are gonna get smaller, right? So we have constructive interference and destructive interference. <clears throat> I have something, uh, there's like the like new AirPods, they, I don't know if it's like the same thing, but they have like this like like, uh, like noise canceling technology, whatever. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, oh. hold on. Okay. I'm gonna ask about that in oh, a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, so we're good so far? Mm -hmm. So far so good? Uh, okay. Kind of. Oh, all right, hold on. Destructive interference is when they add together. When they add together, and destructive is when they subtract. And we're gonna go through that. I have slides for it. Now, in a normal year, I've been told this isn't a normal year. Right. So in a normal year, what I would do is I would make everybody gather every, around and we would pull that psyche out again and we would do it again, right? But for everybody who was here, which is everybody but Selma, right, um, in the room, we did this. We actually saw this with the slinkies. For you guys at home, you couldn't do it because it's like with our camera and Zoom, it's really kind of not possible. Um, although I do have videos, I'm looking for my other good videos that they took last year. Because some of my students last year on their phones had with like, they did the slow motion and all that and they came out perfect. So I, I just have to find them. I made them send them to me, but I think they may have transferred them on that computer, not emailed them. Because uh, okay. if they email, I never throw anything out. It's in my, I've been looking. So yeah, so constructive interference, you guys, happens when the waves are on the same side of the rest line. So let's say I have a slinky. Um, I take a slinky and I stretch it out, okay? And then uh, Matt's on one side and I say, hey, can you send a pulse to me that's one tile, that's one tile big? Move your hand to the left, so that's gonna be one tile big. And then I'm gonna send a pulse to you that's exactly one tile big. So they can, they can see these pictures easier at home. That's why I was drawing back over them. Um, so this is your wave, this is my wave, right? They're both one tile. Now, there's only one slinky to move, right? And so as those waves approach each other, when they hit the same part in the slinky, the same coils, there can only be one wave, right? So they add together to make one. Uh, and yep, and when they add together to make one, uh, they'll be too big. So that one was one tile big, that one was one tile big. They end up being two tiles for one moment in time, just a moment. And then after that moment, the waves just keep right on trucking and keep on going. They go to the opposite direction. Well, they, right, but yeah, so, so this one was going to the left. Oh, it just keeps yeah. going to the left. Remember, they don't bounce off each other, which that's like an optical illusion, mm -hmm. it, right? It totally seems like they bounce off, but they don't. It's like, it's it's like two <laughs> twins run into the same room and they run <laughs> right, back off. Right, right, right. So, um, what if you did like uh, a wave that one, one slinky is bigger and one slinky is smaller? Oh, it still doesn't matter. So if this one, uh, like if this one was well, one and this one was easy, two. It would just be easier to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe. But it's still the A plus B. Yeah, it would still be A plus B, but you're right. You know what, Veronica? I'm going to do that next year. That's a good suggestion. Like the after interference, you'd see the, right. the smaller wave going the same direction. Right. Going and the bigger wave going the same. Direction. So I don't know if you remember, but I, I did something to show that for destructive interference. Here, which we'll talk about in one second. So does this make sense for constructive interference? Yeah. So far, you guys? Yeah? Okay. So if the, if the waves are on the same side of the rest line, they add up. Now, another way of saying that, and I'll say this a lot, if the waves are on the same side of the rest line, we call those waves in phase. So if the waves are in phase, then they get bigger. If the waves are on opposite sides of the rest line, we call them out of phase. And if they're on the opposite side, they're going to get smaller, okay? So here's my picture. This picture is really hard to see yeah. from here. But at home, they can see it. 
So, you know, this time I have Julian, I say, hey Julian, send me a wave, move your hand to the left, and then I'm gonna move my hand on the opposite side. I'll, I'll make it one tile big, you make yours one tile big, right? Uh, so then for the one moment, for the one moment in time where the two waves hit each other, if we did it perfect, then the slinky goes totally flat. Because if this is basically minus one and that's basically plus one, they'll cancel out. So destructive interference happens when they're on the opposite sides of the rest line, or another way of saying that is when they're out of phase. Okay, then the waves just keep right on trucking in the direction that they were going. So Julian's wave keeps going this way, my wave keeps going this way. Yeah. And this is when, when we were present, so not everybody got a chance to be present, but when we were present, what I did to prove this is I stood on this side, right? And I put my foot, I basically put my foot right on the slinky, almost. And so this wave missed my foot when it was traveling to the right, but then my wave coming back from the other side hit the foot, right? And so you could tell that they did pass through each other instead of hitting and bouncing off. Right. But it's, it's hard to see that in real life because it kind of freaks you out. Like you're not sure what you're looking at. Right, you right? Like where it started. Right, right. Um, so still, still good so far, right? So far, so good. Okay. Um, so now I have sound waves, right? Sound waves are just like any other wave. So if I have sound waves that have constructive interference, the waves are going to get bigger, right? And if I have sound waves that have destructive interference, they're gonna get smaller, right? And so in some places on this wave, that, well, first of all, the amplitude of the wave, do you, does anybody know what characteristic of the sound that represents? Like frequency represents the pitch? Volume. Low, Volume, yep, that's exactly right. So amplitude is gonna be the volume of the wave. So in places where I have constructive interference, the sound of the, or the volume of the wave gets bigger, it's gonna get louder, and destructive interference, it'll get softer, right? Now, I'm gonna show you an example of that uh, with some tuning forks. All right, so I have two tuning forks, and you know what I need? Actually, one of these boxes got cracked. And so I'm gonna to try to get a better, here, let me try to get a better uh, thing to hit these with. Yeah, a lot of tuning forks. Or not. So the, for some reason this mallet works better, I think. Yeah, like a, uh, like a percussion mallet? Yeah, yeah. So like I have these mallets too, but I, I think it's just a little too hard, so these work better. So I have two tuning forks. Um, everybody at home, you can see them, right? And they're in sound boxes. Now, if these tuning forks were exactly the same, I would hit one tuning fork, I would hit the other tuning fork, and because they, if they were exactly the same, they would be in phase with each other, and it would just get louder, all right? Now, these tuning forks were not made perfectly. So this one is supposed to be, you know, I can't remember, like 300 hertz. And this one's supposed to be 300 hertz. But they're not. Like this one is like 301, and this one's like 299. So when I hit these, in some, yeah, in some places they're going to be in phase, so it'll get louder. In some places they're going to be out of phase, so they're going to get softer. And does anybody know, music people know what we call that? Wobble. Yeah, it's wobble, or uh, it's also called a beat pattern. A beat pattern. So I'm going to play these and hopefully we'll be able to hear it. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of hard. Here. It's kind of hard because these are cracked, dude. Like it's what you're hearing here, but we'll try it with these, but these don't work as well. That's the problem. So. Can you guys hear that? Well, I'm going to show you that in one second. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully you could, could you hear that at home, Arnie? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to play you guys a, a video. All right. Uh, and just so you know, we're we're thinking about how we're going to end up this year. Uh, and, and we might do a, a video project at the end for the juniors because the seniors leave us a full week before you. Um, yeah, like I can't, like we're, we're still trying to figure it out. And then also like the other thing, like the May 5th and 4th, I'll be out for the AP testing. Well, right, so there's AP testing. Then there were the two days for, for SAT testing. Like they took a lot, and this quarter was shorter anyway. Mm -hmm. They took a lot of days from us. So, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. It, but that's neither here nor there. So, I'm going to play this video for you guys. What was that? I think quarter three is long, was longer because it's 10 weeks. Yeah, so quarter was three was longer. longer. Yeah. So, we got through more material. But I'm going to play this video for you. So, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this share real quick. Grammarly can help you write quick. I don't know why. This is my video, so I don't know why they're playing Ads on your video. You don't get any ad revenue? No, no, they're they're stealing money from me. So uh, anyway, I have to stop. Wait, hold on. I have to stop that share, and then I have to start this share. Okay, you guys ready? So this he's gonna have the slinky. He's gonna have all that stuff. I can even turn off. That we completed. We explained how wave interference works. When the waves are on the same side of the rest line, they add together to make a larger wave. Right. Waves on the opposite side of the rest line. That's not even a good video. Subtract from each other to make a smaller wave. I was asked to demonstrate this concept using sound, so I decided to demonstrate beats. I set up an oscilloscope on this computer so that when I strike one tuning fork, you can see the wave form on the other on the screen. You can also hear how the sound maintains the same frequency and volume. When I hit a second tuning fork with almost the same frequency, you will be able to hear the volume go up and down. This happens because when the sound waves are on the same side of the rest line, they add together, which makes the sound louder. And when they are when they are on the opposite side of the rest line, they subtract to make the sound softer. You can see the combined wave on the oscilloscope. fancy physics room the old physics room basically went to the end mm -hmm. of there and then like not all the way to the back and then they were sitting on a couch in our old office oh okay I was like I, was, I, I thought it was like one of their houses or something nope maybe he told your couch uh no I let them wait that development in one of the old physics rooms he's, or, or one of the physics rooms in general you said that there was some it was a hook and it never got removed. Yeah, that was the old, that was that physics room. That was it. So, so you guys could, but you could see how that works, right? If you're a musician, you already knew this because you may not have thought about the physics behind it. Maybe you did, I don't know. But now, but now you know how it works. Um, yeah, and so that's why you have to tune your instruments because if you don't tune them, like you get that beat pattern 
and it, it doesn't sound good, right? It sounds bad. Um, and it actually, so being out of tune is really important when you're playing with people, right? right? If, you're playing, if you're playing solo on your own, it's, not, it's actually not as important, right? It's only when you're playing with other people. Um, so like, and we're gonna talk about this soon, if you're a marching band, you know that changing the medium for the air actually changes the frequency of the sound that's being produced by your instrument. Because in marching band, when it's summer and you're out and it's super flipping hot, right? Your instrument plays sharp. And then in those days when it's like October, November, and it's snowing and you're going out to do the halftime show, your instruments play flat, right? right? There's a reason for that. Yeah. It has to do with V equals F lambda, and we're gonna get back to it. <laughs> we're gonna circle back around to that. There's a physics reason. So now, the other thing I wanna talk about, and this is something that we were able to see uh, here, and I do have videos, I just didn't wanna play another video, is that if I send a wave, right? I'm sending a wave on a slinky. So, uh, you know, Kayla, I asked her to send me a wave and I'm holding the slinky with my hand. Um, so she sends a wave in this direction. Now, as soon as it hits my hand and it goes back, do you guys remember what it did? It yeah, it, re it flipped sides. So it came in on the top side and then when it reflects, it flips to the bottom and then comes back down. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Right, and so you could see that in this picture. There was an incoming pulse. As soon as it hits, it, it uh, bounces back, and it bounces back on the other side, all right? So this happens with all waves. Happens with sound waves, happens with ocean waves, all these waves. Um, and actually, with ocean waves, that's why people think that like the water in the ocean actually moves back and forth, because at the end, at the boundary, when the ocean waves are reflecting back in, there's a lot of uh, messiness there. And so that's the only place where the water is actually sloshing around back and forth because of all that wave interference that's happening. All right, so anyway, so knowing about interference, knowing about reflected pulses, when it hits a surface, if it reflects off of it, it's gonna bounce back. Can anyone explain why, or t give me a reason why, like a recording studio is a better acoustic environment than a car? Yeah, Selma. Because you're like having every time it absorbs the sound, so it doesn't bounce back. Yeah, that's exactly right. So in recording studios, they'll have like foam padding on the side. So that foam padding absorbs the sound wave. It takes the, the energy in the wave and it turns it into heat, you know, whatever, due to friction. It does not let it reflect, okay? Um, think about any, any environment where sound is important. They always have what we call acoustic tiles, all right? And those tiles are soft surfaces, uh, you know, a lot of times covered in cloth, and they'll put them up. So everybody in here has been to a movie theater at some point, right? Everybody in here has uh, been forced at some point in their life and career to go to the theater, right? For an assembly or something, uh -huh. or, you know, you, you are forced, Julian, you did it by choice, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh -huh. you go in there, don't they have those big panels, like those big, big cloth panels? That's not decoration, you guys. Those are acoustic panels. They're meant to absorb the sound, all right? Wow. Because if the sound reflects, then it's going to interfere with the new sound being made, right? Because uh, think about a speaker. So I have my speaker, right? Here's my, like, there's my speaker. It's pumping out sound. If that sound hits a wall, reflects back, and comes back at the speaker, um, these reflected waves are gonna interfere with the waves that are coming out of the speaker, right? Mm -hmm. And those waves will be, a lot of times they'll be out of phase because the way that, the way that they're produced, they flip when they reflect it. Um, sometimes they'll be in phase. So what ends up happening is all that sound interference makes the volume go up and down in actually unpredictable ways. So if, if you're one of those people that spends thousands of dollars, puts all these speakers in their car, right? Like I have to question your sanity because there's no car that can be a good acoustic environment. There's too many hard surfaces in there. There's your dashboard, right? Usually the doors are hard surfaces on the inside. And by the way, 
you can open the windows, but you can't open the windshield. And unless you have a convertible, you can't open the back window, right? So those are hard surfaces where the sound's gonna bounce off. But then even then, aren't there external sounds coming into the car if you have your windows open then? Yeah, for sure there are external sounds coming into the car if you have your windows open. So like, you know, here's where I'm gonna sound like the old, the old man, like the get off my yard man, right? Get out of my lawn, kid. Every time some kid, and it, they're always, they're not always kids. They're just younger than me, it seems. Uh, they drive down my road. I live in a very, fairly busy road, and they drive down my road, and they're pumping their music out of the car, right? Super loud. It always sounds like garbage. Always. It can't not sound like garbage because there's too much wave interference. So I want to know, like, can you guys tell me? Does it help you get a girlfriend or boyfriend? Like, is that why you're doing it? Does it make you seem cool? I'm going to put that in air quotes. Right, right. You, you could take your money and invest it in something like you could invest it in stocks and then get rich. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then and then go somewhere which is a good acoustic environment and play your music. Have your friends. Bora over. Bora. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, right, right. But but you guys know that if you're in your car, actually, oh, the yeah, more you yeah. turn up that volume, the worse it gets, right? The worse that sound quality and gets. And not only that, I have this, like, Bluetooth adapter in my car to the turbo. So it, like, I have to tune it to the FM. Oh, so oh yeah. right, right. Static -y. Right. Which makes it even worse. Yeah. So if you drive by my house, I'll yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> With it cranked up to 25. I'll turn up the bass then. Thanks. Oh, oh yeah, because that's you feel it. There, which is actually something we're going to talk about. Something called resonance. Yeah, if you pump up the bass, I'm going to pump up like uh, just sub uh, subsonic, maybe about 15 hertz. I'm going to crank it up. You guys can research subsonic? the brown note if you if you oh, don't okay. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right, but that's that's for another day. So. Julian, can I ask you this question? Yes. Are there any are there any practical uses for destructive interference? Uh, yes, uh, noise cancellation. Oh yeah, noise cancellation. So he was just asking me before about uh, the noise canceling feature on AirPods, right? So true noise canceling headphones use sound interference, you guys. Um, true noise canceling headphones are not noise reducing. So like any headphone that goes all the way over your ear, right? That's like it's so bizarre to me to see those back because that was a 70s thing, right? <laughs> so, but anything that goes over your ear is going to be noise reducing. You could try it if you want. Just put your hands over your ear and try to talk like la, 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 la. It's, it's obviously the sound's going to be less, right? But noise, noise canceling does this. It takes the incoming wave. Now remember, sound's not a transverse wave. It's just easier to represent, right? So it takes the incoming sound wave. And then it produces a sound wave that is exactly out of phase. And if I do that, the resulting wave is nothing. It has zero volume. Okay, so then how, how do I do that? And by the way, true noise canceling headphones are expensive. Yeah. They're expensive. What equipment do I need in the headphone to make it work? Yeah, I need a microphone and a speaker. If it doesn't have a microphone, it, it can't work, right. right? Because the microphone, the microphone here senses this incoming sound. So the microphone senses the incoming sound, then it has to have a computer chip that literally has one job. The computer chip uh, takes that, flips the, flips the wave, mm -hmm. and then feeds that signal into the speaker. So then the speaker does the exact opposite wave. And, and when it does the exact opposite wave, you get silence, all right? Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this, this wasn't developed for like regular people like you and me, all right? This is one of those things that was developed by the military and then yeah. we get to use it, like GPS, like all this other stuff. Um, Wait, so that's a, like, like, that's a good military? question. I was thinking air captured, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fighter jets for sure. So it's, and it's actually not even the people who are, who are doing the, like the waving around. 
It's the people who are flying flying the jets. So, so inside that fighter jet, it's really loud, right? And that would lead to a loss of hearing over time. Now, fighter pilots need to be able to hear instructions. They need to be able to talk to each other, right? And I don't know if you guys ever thought about this, but it costs you know, one to two million dollars to train each fighter jet pilot. Because not only do they have to go to one of the academies for four years, right? Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, whatever. Then they have to get specialized training after that, okay? So there's all, and by the way, when they're, it's not just the people that you're paying to train them, but when they're flying, think of all the jet fuel, think of all of that stuff that goes into training a pilot. Sure. So you can't spend years and millions of dollars training someone, have them fly for a year, and then they can't fly anymore, right? Because they have hearing damage. So that's that's why they developed these. So they they have they were able to cancel out all the other noise in the jet, and then, as you guys know, uh, in these headphones, uh, with, the, with advanced circuitry, I could actually feed in music or voices or whatever else. So it blocks, it entirely blocks all the noise coming out and only feeds through my music at whatever volume. Or in the case of fighter jet pilots, I don't think they're out there jamming to, you know, whatever. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's comms, right, right. Yeah, I saw that movie Top Gun. I do remember music in that movie. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. That may or may not have been realistic, maybe not. And then there's also like a transparency mode on the AirPods too, where I, I, I would assume does the opposite effect where it allows, because if you have an AirPods and someone tries to talk to you, you just turn it off. Yes, right. And like it just like amplify what somebody else Yeah, that's a, Yeah, it's exactly the, like you said, it's, ex, it's the same process, but opposite. Right. Right. Which is nice. So, and, and that's why AirPods, they're not just headphones, right? right. Uh, that's why they're expensive. All, all the ones right, the right, ones the pros. right. Yeah, I got a pair for my no, wife. Like $250. Yeah. yeah, it was. Well, I got a deal on them. Otherwise, I don't think she's worth two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so that's but that's all that I all the new stuff I wanted to go over. And then what I want you guys to work on for um, tomorrow is there's a reading assignment, and I so there's a waves and sound outline. You'll see it on the agenda. I, this is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to Google the answers. The, the fact that you can have the right answers is not the most important part for me, right? It's sort of like on your practice problems. I tell you, the, the right answer is the least valuable part. It's the process in getting there, right? You guys do believe me about this, I hope. <laughs> so, so that assignment is, I, is intended to check that you understand what you read. All right, um, so you can read your book. Your book is really hard to read. Your book would be a college level uh, intro, maybe non-science major textbook, right? Non-calculus based uh, textbook. Um, or I actually have the conceptual physics book, the one for regular physics link there. And I think I've told you guys this before, maybe not. That was my wife's science physics book, right? Yeah, so she, uh, she was a non-major, she was not a science major. And, but you have to still take physics or whatever. She took physics and chemistry, she had to. And, um, and that was her book. The class she was in, we used to call physics for poets. <laughs> well, because, you know, for, it's, it was, U of I calls it physics for non-science majors. But we're like, yeah, it's physics for English people, yeah. physics for poets. But it was, so that was her college textbook. It's a good book, it's very easy to understand. The guy who wrote it is really great. Paul Hewitt, he's a professor at University of Hawaii. I think he's still alive. He's old, pretty old dude. So anyway, so read it and then try to answer the questions. Don't try to thwart me, right? Like I told you. Answers are not the most important part of it. So that's it for today. And 